Hi, I'm David with Portrait Displays, and in this video, we're gonna walk through profiling a colorimeter with a spectroradiometer. Let's get started. First, let's launch Calman. With Calman open, we're gonna to navigate to the top left menu bar, click on Calman, come down to Open Workflow Template, come over to Tools, and select Meter Profiling. Let's click on Profile Meters. And at this point, we're gonna to wanna to connect to our meters that we wish to have profiled. Today, I'm using the Colorimetry Research CR100 along with the Colorimetry Research CR300 spectroradiometer. Let's press Find Meter. I'm gonna select my Colorimetry Research meters here in Calman. Choose Comport 4 and search. We found the Colorimetry Research CR300. Now let's find the CR100. Click on Find Meter. Choose Comport 7 here and search. You'll want to use the COM ports that your meters are connected to and choose the brands that you're working with inside of Calman. Now that our meters are connected, we'll want to connect to our source. Today, I'm using the SpectraCal Virtual Forge connected to an AJA IO4K Plus, generating an SDI signal into this Sony BVM X300. Let's click on Find Source. We're going to choose Manufacturer SpectraCal. Select Virtual Forge. You'll notice Calman has auto discovered the Virtual Forge on the network. We'll press Connect. With our two meters and our generator connected, we'll now press Next. On this page of the workflow, we're going to want to take reference meter measurements using our Hero meter, in this case, the Colorimetry Research CR300 spectroradiometer, so Calman will be able to compare the results of the profiling process later on in the workflow. To do so, let's go up to the SpectraCal Virtual Forge. I'm going to want to align my meters on the screen, so I'm going to choose the specialty patterns and come down to geometry. I now have a geometry pattern on my Sony VVM X300. I'm going to use that to center my Colorimetry Research CR300 and CR100 on the screen. Now, with the Colorimetry Research CR300 and the CR100, you'll notice I have them on a dual meter mount, so both of them are able to measure the screen at the same time. If your meters aren't able to measure the screen at the same time, you'll want to set up your first meter, your hero meter, on the center of the screen, you're going to make measurements and then swap meters later in the workflow. With my meters placed on the screen, there's one more thing I'm going to want to do before I start taking my reference data measurements. I'm going to come into the Sony, press Menu, Come down to the user configuration on this display, choose input setting, and change our color space from BT709 to native. Now you don't have to do this on every display that you're profiling, but it's best practice to set the display that you're profiling in the native color space mode. If not, red and blue may be added to green, or green and blue may be added to red. In order for displays to change their color space from, let's say, BT2020 to BT709, they're going to use a lookup table that adds colors to each other color. The meters don't know the difference. So when we measure green, we want to measure green as purely as possible. We want to measure red as purely as possible, and we want to measure blue as purely as possible. To do that, we put the monitor into the native color space. Let's come back to Calman now, and we'll measure our reference meter data. I'm going to come up to my meters tab, change the CR100 to the CR300 because I'm measuring for the reference meter data, and let's come down to the bottom right and press read series. Calman is now going to put up a pattern, take a reading, and plot the data. It's going to go through white, red, green, and blue. Okay, now that the reference meter data has been collected from the CR300, let's press Next. On this page of the workflow, we're going to create the meter profile. Now, while we've integrated the Create Profile window here inside the workflow, it's important to note that you can also get to it by clicking on the Meters tab and coming down to Meter Profile and selecting New Edit. Let's work within the workflow. Our reference meter is the Colorimetry Research CR300. I'll click on Advanced Options. I currently have this in the auto slow mode. You may find that you get better results in the slow mode or the normal mode versus the fast or fast 2x mode when creating a profile. My recommendation is to always use that normal or slow mode on a CR300. If you're using another meter, make sure you go through your settings here and optimize them for the monitor that you're measuring. Now we'll select our target meter, 
I'm going to change this from the CR300 to the CR100. I'm going to click on my advanced options. And now I have a couple options as well. I have the exposure setting here, which you'll notice I have in user mode. I have this in user mode for the exposure multiplier because I've used the Colorimetry Research app itself to set the probe to have a 5x multiplier by default inside the meter. When CalMAN's in user mode, it's going to use that 5x multiplier. If you don't have a factory setting for setting your multiplier on your meter yourself, you may want to set this to a higher multiplier for the meter profiling so you can average multiple readings to increase stability. There's also some options here for the low light handler. Of course, we're not measuring low light levels when we're building this meter profile, since we're measuring white, red, green, and blue. If you have that selected, it shouldn't make a difference no matter what meter you're reading, because the light levels should be high. Our source is the Spectrical Virtual Forge. And if we come down to our current profile, we have none. I'm going to select Add a Profile. You'll notice our current profile is now Untitled 10. I'm going to rename that. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to call this the Sony BVM X300-CR300. That way I know what monitor I built my profile on and what probe I was using when I built it. We have a couple other options down here when profiling. You'll notice there's a generate profile matrix set to four color matrix method. There are two profile matrix methods within CalMAN, the four color matrix method and the Bodner method. For the purpose of the Sony BVM X300, we're going to use the four color matrix method. However, if you're measuring a non-additive display, such as the WRGB OLEDs, you will want to use the Bodner method as it takes into account the volumetric differences with a WRGB panel. Let's select four color matrix method, scroll down, and now we have two options. We have the single pass or the multi pass option when building our meter profile. I'm going to use the single pass method because my meters are both on the display at the same time. In this method, CalMAN is going to put up one pattern, take a reading with both meters, and move on to the next one. If you can't have both your meters on the screen at the same time because you're switching them on the same tripod, you can use the multi pass method. That's going to put up a pattern, take a reading with one probe go through the entire process, and then ask you to change probes and go through the process again to create the profile. Let's press single pass. Click OK. And now CalMAN's going through the process of putting up the pattern, taking a reading with both meters, and creating our matrix profile. Okay, now that CalMAN's finished creating its profile, let's press Next. On this page of the workflow, we're going to do a profile validation. Remember early in the workflow when we measured with the CR300 for our reference data? We're now going to measure with the CR100 to determine how well it came out. Our CR100 is already selected on the meters page here on the top. Let's now come down to the bottom right and press Read Series. On this final page of the workflow, you'll notice that there's a reference to profile meter readings. Those are your XYY on the top and the profile meter with the XYY on the bottom. Here, we can choose a color such as white for both, and it'll load the data from each meter's reading. Right now, if we look at X on white, we're looking at 3067 and 307, a difference of 0 0.0003. On the Y, 0.3199 and 0 0.320, a difference of 0 0.0001. And on the Candelas Premier Squared, or NITS, we have 99.27 versus 99.5. This is an excellent profile. The meters are very much in sync here. Keep in mind that we also had a lot of light in this room. We do have some lights shining to make this video, and they could have contaminated the profile a little bit. But even still, these are excellent results. We'll click on red. Red is at 6795 and 6795, a difference of zero. Same thing with Y, 3191. And then our luminance, 24.15 versus 24.2, nearly identical. Green, 0 0.2498, 0 0.2497. On the Y, 7051 equal. And on the luminance, 67.59 versus 67.03 a difference of about 0.5 there. Maybe a little larger than I would like, but again, we're in this bright room, lots of light. I'm not going to worry too much about it. On blue, X 
0 0.1395, 0.1396, again, a difference of 0 0.0001. Why? 0 0.052 equal, and on the luminance, 6.95 versus 6.94. These results are excellent, but there's still some things you're going to want to consider when you're building your meter profiles. First, we do have some ambient light shining on the monitor to make this video. That could have contaminated these results. But going another step further, it's important to know the meter tolerance of your probes. The larger the tolerance of your probes, the more error you may have, but it may still be within the repeatability of the probe itself. Additionally, we're working with the Sony BVM X300, a reference grade broadcast monitor. But if your monitor has something like energy saving turned on or an ambient light sensor, you might find that your measurements have larger errors there. So be sure that your monitor is set up properly to perform the meter profile. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.